So if you're looking to buy a laptop right now, heading into 2023, you've picked the perfect time to make a purchase. The 2022 models are going on crazy sales for a lot of different models, and there's a lot of cool things coming in 2023. So maybe if the product is right, you should wait. And I'm gonna talk through all of that in this video for graphic design and digital art. Now, keep in mind, I'm gonna talk also about some specs of things you could look for to make sure you're purchasing the right laptop. If you find something else that isn't on my lineup, again, I just picked my favorites from last year and some things I'm looking forward to in this year in this video. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of any of the models as we're going through the video, you can head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. And I'm very grateful when you all use those links. Now, first and foremost, we're going to start in kind of the entry level category. Now, these are not cheap laptops, okay? But these are on the lower end of the budget of the entire video. So we're starting off with the HP Pavilion Plus and Aero. Now, this is about $649. And the reason I'm starting at this price point is because I don't want you to get a laptop that underperforms. I don't want you to be in the middle of a graphic design project and your laptop's constantly crashing or taking forever to load. Or when you click on a tool, like you click and then the tool you know, changes. Like I want you to have the performance that you need. Now, in regards to like say 2021 models, some CPUs to look out for when you're shopping online is stuff like the i7 1165G7 or the i7 1135G7. Those are great processors from about two SKUs ago. Remember, we're coming into 13th gen here in the spring to summer. Right now, we have a lot of 12th gen Intel available, um, but if you're looking for even more of a discount, you could get back to 11th gen Intel, and that will save you a bit more money. So maybe you can contrast what you're seeing on this video, look back, and then make a purchase. You can even comment below, and some people will give you some feedback, and if I see the comment, I'll be able to give you some feedback as well. I do my best in the comment section, but I'm not always super on top of it. Got a lot going on around here, and I'm very sorry when I don't respond quickly. Now, this laptop has the i5-1240P, great processor from Intel, snappy, responsive, give you good performance. Now, the CPU inside of the Ryzen version is actually the Ryzen 5 5-5625U. Now, this is a processor from a year prior, but still has great performance. I recently reviewed a laptop with that CPU and I was like, wow, this thing's still really snappy. So it could save you some money and give you uh, a great performance model. Now, a couple laptops here on this lineup do have eight gigs of RAM. And the only problem I see with that is if you're doing a lot of multitasking, that means you, you, know, you have Google Chrome open and you're running Spotify and you've got Photoshop or InDesign or, or Affinity open. Every time you open a program, it's gonna pull away from the RAM. So let's say you have eight gigs of RAM, you open Google, now you've used two to three gigs of RAM, okay? So we gotta think about that, gone. So every time you open a program, RAM is used. It's basically the temporary system memory that allows you to open programs and it uses it quickly. It kind of opens, uses it, and then as soon as the program closes, it gives it back. So you open Google, use about two to three gigs. Then you open Photoshop, use it anywhere from two to four, maybe even six gigs if you're using it really heavy. And then you open Spotify and that could be anywhere from one to two to three gigs of RAM. So already with just three programs, your RAM is to the max and you're starting to see some bottlenecking, you're starting to see some of the processes slowing down a little bit. So if you add another eight gigs of RAM, and by add, I mean buy a laptop with more RAM, then you would allow yourself that kind of ceiling to not bottleneck your system as much. Now, keep in mind, some laptops you can do post upgrades. That means after you purchase, you can take the bottom cover off of the laptop and switch out the RAM. But a lot of these more thin and light laptops do not allow you to do that. The exchanges are going to happen in some of the bigger laptops. So for instance, one of the more popular laptops on my channel right now is the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. If you took this bottom cover off, you'd have access to two M.2 SSD storage drives, that'd be, you know, where your files are saved to. So like, you know, say one terabyte or 512 gigs of storage, right? That's what I'm talking about. And then you also have two RAM slots with occupied RAM in them. And so you could pull those two out. Let's say they're both two, you know, eight gig sticks. You could put in two 16 gig sticks to get more RAM out of your system. Okay, so a bigger laptop like this, this is a gaming laptop or a bigger creator laptop allows those upgrades, but some of the more thin and light laptops and actually kind of most of them don't allow you to upgrade. So just do your research before you purchase. If you're like, oh, I might want to upgrade this later, make sure the laptop you're buying is upgradable. If not, make sure you buy it with the right amount of RAM. 
All right, now as far as storage is concerned, how much storage is the right amount? You got 256 gigs of storage, 512, one terabyte, yada, yada. I recommend a nice benchmark at 256 and above. There's some laptops with 128, and I think that's a terrible idea because how quickly you're gonna fill up your storage with project files, with photos, with just stuff, right? And even alone, every time you add a program to your computer, that actually takes up storage space. So you could go from 128 all the way down to like 50 gigs available for your own files because of the apps and system processes that are installed already on the computer. And then anytime you add an app, that's gonna take away from your storage. So that's why I say 256 or above, 512 is a sweet spot, one terabyte, you're like doing really good. Now, if you don't wanna pay the money to get more internal storage, you can always buy hard drives. I love the Samsung T5s or T7s, and then Kingston makes some great drives as well. I'll link some of those up in the description below for you. Now, as we're going through this video, if it's bringing you some value, definitely caress ever so gently and sweetly that like button because that lets other people know that this video would be helpful for them. And YouTube will spit it out to more people that ultimately helps the channel here and gets this great information out to others. Thank you so much. Now, I know I've explained a lot of the specs, but I just wanna make sure you're understanding why we're considering certain laptops, how to think about the specs that are in the laptops so on and so forth. All right, next is the Asus VivoBook 15 Slim. It has the i5-1240P as well, great processor. Um, but as you can see, these two first laptops, they have 64 and 67% sRGB. That is a low sRGB. You wanna have upwards of 99 to 100 for graphic design and you know photography and digital art because that'll help you with color reproduction being most accurate. The more affordable laptops come with more affordable screens because that's usually where they cut costs. They try and give you good performance and they say, well, this person doesn't really need a color accurate screen, but you as an artist, as a designer is going to want a color accurate screen. In my personal opinion, it really mattered to me throughout my years as a designer. I'm now you know, doing YouTube, but design is my background. If you wanna know more in-depth ideas around color accuracy and color gamut range, I film full videos. Just go ahead and search those on my channel. You'll be able to find a full playlist full of the tech terms for the color gamut ranges and color accuracies of laptops. Now, next up is the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. And this is the first laptop with great color gamut range, but also at a great price point. Woo. I love that this laptop's around 699. It has an OLED 100% sRGB to display, and it has an i5-1240P. So snappy processor, great color accuracy. The only downside to this laptop, in my opinion, is the eight gigs of RAM. So if you can find this laptop with 16 gigs of RAM, that would be the perfect purchase. However, it's probably gonna bump up the price to the 750 to $800 range. So just keep that in mind. Now the next laptop on the list is the Asus ZenBook Flip 15 OLED. Now this is the first laptop we're seeing that has has an i7-12700H processor. Now the H series processor is usually found in like gaming laptops. Uh, something like, again, the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Okay, much higher TDP. That means they run hotter. They have higher uh, ability to run frequency at longer lengths of time. For instance, the i5-1240P could maybe get up to the same frequency. That means like the same power or performance for a short amount of time before it has to kind of drop down and conserve its, its energy because it can get so hot. Whereas the i7-12700H can run at those higher frequencies for longer periods of time. Now that also leads into less battery life for some models. However, with the uh, latest Intel Arc graphics inside of this laptop, this has a dedicated GPU. It shares the tasks between the GPU and the CPU. So this laptop can actually get 10 hours of battery life for productivity, which is very rare. Okay, so here with the uh, Lenovo Legion 5 Pro, this gets eight hours max, max. Uh, and that's like with the GPU turned off and like a ton of like settings fixed up to make sure it gets great battery life. For the flip, I really messed with no settings. I think I put it on whisper mode and the battery life was just stellar. So that new Intel Arc stuff, it's really good, especially for designers and digital artists. It allows you to connect multiple monitors very easily, no lag in your system, so definitely something to consider. Now that's a more expensive laptop, it's about $1,400. The reason I had it on this lineup is because it you know, fit well with the other ZenBook. Next up is the Acer Swift 3 OLED, a great laptop for designers. However, it does have a lower battery life, but if you're looking for a laptop in the $850 to $1,100 range, you can get the i5-12500H or the i7-12700H. 
you get either eight gigs or 16 gigs of RAM and you get a 100% sRGB screen with 512 gig SSD. So great laptop. Um, I like it. I don't think it's the best built, like as an assembled. It's got great build materials. It's got aluminum chassis, but it's a little, it's a little rattly, a little bit of a thin aluminum um, design. Next is the Lenovo Legion 7i and 9i. I used the 9i for a couple of years as my on-the-go laptop until I switched over to the uh, ZBook, and I really liked it. It had great performance. It was snappy. I even had the one with the i7 1165G7. Great, great laptop. Uh, you can even find those for a good deal right now. I have the i7 1260p listed here for about the $1,200 to $1,400 range. But if you're looking to save a little money, you could get kind of that older model, the 11th gen, that'll save you a bit of cash. Now for this, we have 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and a 99% sRGB, so good color accuracy. All right, next up is the Apple MacBook Air M1 and also the M2. Now, if you wanna save some money, check out the M1. If you wanna get kind of the latest and the greatest, the M2 is great as well. Definitely gonna be a little bit faster, not that much faster though. Now keep in mind, the biggest reason I would I would go for the M2 is they gave you that 16 by 10 aspect ratio with the M2. I don't think the M1 came with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. That would be a reason for choosing the M2 version of the Air. <clears throat> now these are great laptops. They're gonna be snappy, they're gonna be responsive, and they're gonna have great color gamut range. Now with the eight gigs of RAM, that's actually onboard RAM. It's like literally like connected to the CPU. So that actually translates to more like 16 gigs of RAM. So that's a great purchase idea is doing the MacBook Air with the eight gigs of RAM. However, I would look for a model with 512 gigs of SSD. Next up is the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 i7-1260p. This is the best performing i7-1260p laptop that does not have a dedicated GPU. This thing is killer with performance. It's got great color gamut range, got 16 gigs of RAM, and it's super thin and light. Now it is a little flexible to the twist, like if you you know, kind of grab a laptop like this and try and like flex it, it is pretty flexible. So that's the only thing that concerns me a little bit about that one is that it's like, okay, how is longevity gonna be on that if like you actually sit on it or you drop your backpack or whatever it might be. It, was, it didn't feel like the most durable laptop, but it definitely is thin and light on the go friendly and it's a two-in-one laptop with a pen, so it's got great functionality. All right, next up on the list, if I can find it here in my stack, is the X13. This laptop is like the perfect on-the-go business creator laptop, and here's why. Okay, so it's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, nice tall aspect ratio, so it's small, yet the taller screen allows more workflow room. Now second, it has a dedicated GPU. So hooking up multiple monitors to this laptop is no problem. It has two USB Type-C ports, an HDMI port, and a dedicated GPU, as I just mentioned, which not only allows you to connect to multiple monitors without pulling away power from the CPU, but it also allows you to do some light 4K video editing very easily on this laptop. Now, the biggest downside of this laptop is the small trackpad. As you can see, that's quite a small trackpad, especially compared to another favorite laptop of mine, from this year, and that's the HP Spectre X360. So the HP Spectre X360 comes with a fantastic 16 by 10 color accurate, bright display, and a huge trackpad. I mean, look at the difference there in those trackpads. It's just not even a comparison. However, in 2023, the X13 is getting a larger trackpad, and so that'd be something you should consider, is waiting unless you want to get a killer deal on this laptop right now. The X13 comes in at around $1,200, which normally it retailed at about $1,500 to $1,600. So if you want to save about three dollars to $400, I'd grab last year's X, X13 and grab a mouse, and then you'll be cooking. Uh, it's got great battery life, about 13 hours of battery life when you're only using the CPU on eco mode. And it just, man, it's sleek, it's good looking, it's professional. I just think it's one of the best Asus laptops for creators who are on the go. Uh, next up is the Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch M2. I think this is the best kind of bang for buck among the Apple lineup. Reason being is I think the Pro 14 and the Pro 16 are just way too expensive and not really worth that um, upgrade. Like you're doing graphic design and art, like you're not doing big video production, you're not doing uh, After Effects work, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. If you are, then yeah, I might lean you towards the 14 with the more powerful processor. But for the who I'm talking to here in my audience, we're talking graphic design and digital art. And so I think the 13 is like the sweet spot. It's not too expensive, not cheap, 
but it's like right there in the middle. If you want more screen size, grab an external monitor. Grab a color accurate external monitor for like two, three hundred dollars. Bam! It's way better than spending like a thousand dollars more to get the 14 inch Pro uh, M1 Pro, or even the 16 inch M1 Pro, which is like twenty four to twenty six hundred dollars. Um, again, just trying to help you see kind of the full picture between all these different models. Uh, next up is the Lenovo ThinkPad Z13. This is quite a pricey model. And the reason is, is 100% sRGB, it's got 16 gigs of RAM, and it's got a very powerful Ryzen 7 6850U Pro processor. Now that's not just marketing jargon, this processor gets you 20 hours of battery life. This comes with vegan leather on the top cover. It is the sexiest laptop that I saw in 2022. So for me, it's expensive, but it doesn't uh, lack in features or functionality. 20 hours of battery life, one of the best no, the best battery life I saw out of a Windows laptop in 2022. Definitely want to note that if you're considering. If you're somebody who's on the go a lot, it's a great laptop. Okay, absolute best bang for buck on this entire video is going to be the Asus Zephyrus G14. That laptop retails for about $1,649, and I've seen it as low as $999. Insane. Now, right now, it's on sale that I see, saw most recently on Best Buy for $1,199. If you're somebody who likes to game, or not only you're doing graphic design, digital art, but you're also doing video editing, and you're looking for a 100% sRGB screen, one terabyte of storage, and 16 gigs of RAM with a powerful eight gig of VRAM dedicated GPU card, that's a heck of a deal. Um, it's a comfortable laptop. It's got a nice large trackpad. I mean, it's just got so much going for it. The only thing it doesn't have in regards to digital art and graphic design is a touch screen. So it's not a two-in-one laptop, it's not a touch screen, but man, price to performance, best bang for buck, that Zephyrus is a killer machine. Um, I'm not gonna over talk it, it's just really great. And it's super affordable. Looking to the new year, um, I don't think we're gonna see that substantial of an upgrade to make it worth waiting. I think the G14 from this year is plenty of power, especially for graphic designers and digital artists. Now the HP Spectre X360, uh, this is the 14 inch model. Um, and so this was one of my favorite laptops for designers and artists this year. Two in one, touch screen, color accurate display, uh, bright display. It's got multiple USB type C's. It has a micro SD card reader, which to me, like, I don't know who's going to use that, right? We all use full size SD cards, at least I do for like all my photography. Uh, so it just didn't make a ton of sense to me doing a micro SD card reader, but that's what they did. Um, I just love looking into this laptop as I'm using it. It's like a massive iPad stuck on top of a keyboard uh, and it has great performance. So this is the i7-1255U version, great performance. Um, large trackpad, as I mentioned earlier. It's just, it's such a nice package. It's thin and light. I mean, look at that. The thing is like razor thin. Remember the old razor phones? This is like what I think of when I see this laptop. It's just, man, it's a great, great build. Now it's updating. So we're just gonna let this update, put this over here somewhere. Next up is going to be the MacBook Pro 14. Like I mentioned, I think if you're gonna do, you know, After Effects and some video editing, then yeah, it makes sense to get the 14 inch model with a slightly more powerful CPU. But if you're just doing graphic design and digital art, do not waste your money, get the 13 inch. That's my recommendation. Next up is going to be the best Asus laptop money can buy at this moment. In my opinion, Asus took everything they learned over the past three to five years and packed it into this laptop. Well, everything except the fact that they should have a full-size SD card reader. Asus should have one. Micro SD card doesn't make sense. They need to have a full-size one. Okay, rant over. But it's got HDMI, multiple USB type C's, uh, USB type A's and comes with a large trackpad right there, two in one laptop for art and the Ryzen 9 6900 HS processor. Now, whoo, this laptop is going to Intel next year. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? I am not sure yet because we don't know how well Intel 13th gen will perform for battery life. But battery life on this laptop this year with an RTX 3070 Ti, which is a very powerful dedicated GPU. If I were you as a graphic designer, I would get the RTX 3060 version because it's around $1,749 on sale right now. However, this has the 3070 Ti and it got 10 hours of battery life on eco mode, which means it's just running the CPU. But my question is, can Intel 13th gen match the battery life of this laptop? Now there's multiple reasons why they're switching to 13th gen. However, I think right now, 
as the with the knowledge that we have, this is the laptop to buy in regards to the X16. Man, it's such a good laptop. I've done full reviews on this laptop. You can definitely check those out if you wanna know more info on it, but it's got a large 16 inch mini LED display. It's bright, it's color accurate, um, and it's touchscreen two in one. The, the artist capabilities of this laptop are second to none. Um, it's, it's just the, you know, the big brother of the X13. More color accurate, brighter. It's just great. Definitely consider it. Really? All right, the Legion 5 Pro. Okay, this is like the best overall bang for buck laptop for After Effects, 3D modeling, and video editing. And if you're a gamer, this has 97% sRGB. It has a medium sized trackpad. It's got a large keyboard, 16 inch panel, lots of ports and connectivity. So for me, this isn't necessarily the best digital art and graphic design laptop, but if you're doing more than digital art and graphic design, this is about $1,400 right now, and there's not a laptop that performs much better to justify the price. There's laptops that are three to $4,000 that will perform better than this one, but at $1,400, this performs as good as laptops at three to $4,000. So it's just, it's an amazing bang for buck. It even outperforms um, the X16, which I just praised extensively, um, at you know four hundred dollars less, three hundred dollars less. I think it's like fourteen forty nine right now for the Legion. But it's not a touchscreen. It's not a two in one laptop, and it's not as color accurate as the mini LED display on the X16 with better battery life than the X16. Okay, so just trying to get the full full gamut of ideas here. All right, next up is the Microsoft Surface Laptop 5, a little more expensive than I really think it's worth. However, if you're a big Microsoft fan and you want a really thin and light laptop with uh, USB Type-C connectivity, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, color accurate, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, and great performance, then it could be a buy for you. However, for me, it just kind of outprices me. I just think 20... $400 for a non, no dedicated GPU when I could, man, heck, I could buy the MacBook Pro 13 for half, like for a thousand dollars less. And I would probably do that. Um, or you could get the X16, bigger screen, uh, color accuracy, 16 by 10, dedicated GPU for $1749. Like that, I just, I included it because I think it's a great laptop. But when you put apples to apples, I'm just like, or oranges to oranges, or windows to windows, I'm just like, eh, it's not even close. All right, the Legion, Lenovo Legion 7 Slim and 7i Slim. Okay, this laptop is fantastic for artists, graphic designers, and also if you're somebody who does photography along with that. The reason being is this laptop is thin and light, so it's very on-the-go friendly. It has a full-size SD card reader, it has multiple USB type C's and USB type A's along the back panel. It has a 16 by 10 panel, which is 97% color accurate to sRGB. It's got a nice size trackpad, full size keyboard, and it has solid battery life. Not as good of battery life as the X16, but it is about $100 cheaper than the X16. Now, keep in mind the X16 is a touchscreen two in one laptop. The uh, Legion 7 is not. So that's why I'm still like, huh, check this laptop out. The X16 is fantastic. Like, it makes the most sense for artists and designers because of the functionality of it. However, I'm a huge fanboy of the Legion 7. I love the build quality. It feels a little more sturdy than the X16, um, but these two, man, they really duke it out. I've done a head-to-head -head video between these two if you wanna know my more of my thoughts on them. Yes. The Dell XPS 15 was my first Windows laptop after being an Apple fanboy for many years. I switched over to Windows and bought a Dell XPS 15. I loved it. I bought a little bit underpowered model. That was probably a mistake that I made. I bought two generations old when a generation was literally coming out like that same month. Really frustrated me. I didn't know much about laptops then, but let me assure you, if you buy last year's model right now on a deal uh, for the i7-12700H and RTX 3050, you're getting a great laptop with great performance. If you wait for the newer model, you might get you know 15 to 20% boost in performance, but I really think right now for a graphic designer or digital artist, that uh, i7-12700H is way more performance than you even need. It's fantastic. It is a kick booty performance laptop. Um, it's gonna have an aluminum top cover. However, it's gonna have a matte carbon fiber soft touch finish on the inside, which to me was the dream of that laptop. I loved using that laptop. It was comfortable, it was nice to type on. I mean, it still works. It just is, doesn't have enough performance for what I do now with 6K video editing. I mean, I would still use it uh, if, if the performance did not, um, if the performance was more of what I need. Great laptop, loved it. Next up is the 
Mac daddies of creator laptops. Okay, so right now we have the Asus ZenBook Pro 16 OLED, Pro 16X OLED, and the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16. These both come with dials. If you wanna know more about the dial, I have full dedicated videos about the dial, teaching about, not teaching, but telling you about the features and what makes these great. But in a nutshell, you can program these dials. This one is mechanical here, spins. This one is glass touch. Um, and basically what it does is it allows you to program different tools inside of say Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, Affinity, whatever. And what you can do is you can maybe like have it change the brush size or the opacity or change the type of brush or zoom in or zoom out. Like it's just, it's a workflow productivity booster. And I really think it's not a gimmick. It is a game changer. Even in like Premiere Pro, you can scroll through your timeline. You can zoom in and out of your timeline. It just allows you to have like a third hand, so to speak. Um, and I really, really like it. If I were gonna recommend 2022 or 2023 to you, I would recommend 2023 for the studio book. Reason being is for graphic designers and digital artists, these clickable trackpad buttons don't make sense. They make the most sense for 3D modeling and architecture because basically you click this middle button and then you can like rotate around an object in a 3D program. However, with the click button right and left being so far apart because the trackpad is so wide, it's cumbersome when working and the clack the clack pad, <laughs> the trackpad itself is not clickable, right? It's touch sensitive, so you can like click to the touch, but you can't like click and drag, uh, which I often have done so much in graphic design and art programs. That's where I would recommend the 2023 model because in 2023, we're gonna see a full size clickable trackpad. I'm thinking lacking these buttons, at least that's what the marketing photos have shown. Whereas over here with the Zenbook, I would totally go for this year's model if you can find it on a deal because this whole very large glass trackpad <clears throat> is clickable. It's a vibration click trackpad. It's very, very sensitive. It's very accurate. I like this setup a lot. This, the keyboard actually lifts up. You can see it lifts up off of the keyboard deck. That's very comfortable. This is a touch screen display, 16 inch panel. It's not a two in one, however, um, but it does have great connectivity. You have USB uh, type C's, you have an SD card reader. Got an SD card reader on the studio book as well. Um, but if I'm gonna say one of my favorite art laptops or graphic design laptops of the year, I really like the ZenBook. It's got so much great features. It runs cool, it runs quiet, it's got great performance. It's just enjoy. It's an enjoyable product to use. Um, that even and I've been a huge fanboy of the Studio Book, but currently because of the trackpad being not what I like, this is the winner for me for one of my favorite laptops of the year. All right, next up is going to be the full size MacBook Pro M1 Pro. I I can't find a justification for the price. Okay, the reason that I could justify the Studio Book for you know about twenty one to twenty six hundred dollars, twenty seven hundred dollars, depending on which model you purchase is I mean the dial is extremely functional. It's got a RTX 3070 Ti, very powerful GPU. It's got an i7-12700H, very powerful CPU. It outperforms the base model MacBook Pro M1 Pro. 16 inch panel, color accurate, OLED, like it's a killer laptop. The reason I would say I can't justify the price on the 16 inch is because it performs almost as good as the 14 inch. And then the 14 inch is only a bit better than the 13 inch. And so that the price scales up so quickly on these MacBook Pros, I just think the best bang for buck for graphic designers and digital artists is going to be the MacBook Pro 13 inch M2. I just think it's gonna have all the performance you need, have all the functionality you need. Get an external monitor if you want a bigger screen. That's my recommendation. If you think, hey, I'm on the go, I need a 16 inch screen because I can't always bring a monitor with me, then I totally understand why you might purchase that laptop. I just think as far as bang for buck, it doesn't have it. Now, I know there's a lot of laptops coming out in 2023, but honestly, right now is the sweet spot to buy some great 2022 laptops on sale. If you've seen anything in this video where you're thinking, okay, yeah, it might make sense to wait for the Asus ProArt Studio Book with the full trackpad, not the clickable buttons included, then yeah, to me, it makes sense to wait for the 2023 model or even waiting for something like the X13, which will have a much larger trackpad in 2023, then yes, it would make sense to wait for it. However, if you're looking for a deal, you've picked the perfect time to buy a laptop. So definitely check the link in the description below. Check the live pricing. Of course, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, I'm super grateful when you guys use those links because that's what keeps this channel alive. I'll see you guys here on the next video. Definitely check the channel if you want more info on buying laptops as a creative professional.